Hi, I'm Mr. Franklin, and in this video, we're going to basically take all the pieces that we've been talking about individually. We're going to take our distance versus time, velocity versus time, acceleration versus time, and net force, and we're going to put all this information together, hopefully to give you a big picture of how all the pieces fit. Motion that accelerates. So this time we're going to switch to a car so that we can constantly accelerate. Because a soccer ball has a momentary acceleration, you kick it, and then the force is done. Okay? So this time we're going to go with a car where there's a constant acceleration, constant acceleration. We're going to accelerate forward, and acceleration means we're going to get faster and faster and faster. But we're also going to be moving forward while we're doing this. So if I were to draw my dot diagram, what is this going to look like? It's like we're sitting here at the starting line. Ready, set, go, and we got one second. But in this next second, instead of being evenly spaced, I'm going faster, and I'm going faster, and oh my goodness, I'm going really, really fast, okay? So if I were to graph each of these distances at time equals one, time equals two, time equals three, what you're gonna see is a curved line, because it's gonna go a little bit, a little bit longer and then a lot further along and if you connect those dots it actually makes the shape of a curve makes the shape of a curve so with constant speed we've got a straight distance line okay which the slope is constant and then acceleration would be zero but now we're dealing with a curved line and it's pointing up so it's positive a curved line which is going to turn into a straight line that's angled okay so let's take a look at this. If I take this one point right here, if I take that point and I were to draw a line through the curve, so I can do that as long as the line that we draw is tangent to the curve. So if I take something that's curved and I take something that's straight and lay it against the edge, as long as the radius line is perpendicular to the ruler, then it's tangent to the curve. Well, now I can take this circle and put it to the side, and I can take the slope of this line and get a value, okay? So for grins, let's make up some numbers real quick. Let's say that's one, two, three, and let's say our distance here was one, and let's say this one is four, so this isn't an actual graph, I'm just marking where the points will be. And so this one would be nine, and then this one will be 16, okay? If I calculate the slope at each of those points, it's gonna be different, but it's rise over run. So one and one, so we have a rise of one and a run of one. So one divided by one is one. So at one second, at one second, our velocity is one. So if I mark that point, it's gonna be right here. So we've got our next line, and we're gonna have a different tangent line, and it goes through that point, but it's perpendicular to the radius of the curve, and the curve is changing, so the radius, okay, it gets complicated, but the bottom line is you're calculating the slope of that, and you got four, a rise of four, and a run of two, so four divided by two, which is two. So now we got two and two, the next one. So the slope is getting steeper and steeper and steeper, steeper and steeper and steeper. And so now it's going to be nine divided by three, which is three. So that's going to be three. And the last one, I hope you've noticed the pattern already. The last one will be four. So 16 divided by four will be four. And if we graph those points properly with the scale and all that kind of stuff, I'm just sketching it right now, then what we get is a straight line. So a curved line is gonna turn into a straight line. And then the slope of this line is going to be a constant value, but it's gonna have a value, it's not zero. We calculated slope to find that, and we're going to calculate the slope of this to find that. So let's just do it really basically, a, a rise of four. So 
So our rise is four, and then we have a run of four. So four divided by four is one. So our acceleration is going to be one. So the main thing that we're gonna want you to get for this is we have a curved line. So we're going further and further and further, faster and faster. Our distance is increasing at an increasing rate, which means velocity is increasing, which means there must be an acceleration, okay? Now this time the acceleration is positive, so we can't determine the value of that without knowing more information, but we can know that the net force will be positive. If the acceleration is positive, the net force must be positive. So let's take a look at that. So we have our standard ground and gravity canceling each other out, but now we have another force. We have the force of the engine pushing it. And as long as there's no friction, and this gets complicated if you think about reality, okay, but right now we're just saying there's only the force of the engine and that's enough to make it go. We add all those forces together and these two cancel each other out because one is positive and one is negative and they're the same value. So they're gonna cancel out. And so you're left with this positive force. Why is it positive? Because it means it's a force is pushing in the positive direction. So the car is moving with the velocity in that direction, but that's because, and it's accelerating in that direction. Acceleration is also a vector. It also has direction. Both of those are happening in this direction. So there is a positive net force. So this is where we start to connect. Newton's first law is still applies. It always applies, okay? But what we're seeing is there's actually an acceleration causing a change in the motion, which means there must be a force. So that's really getting into Newton's second law. So this time we're gonna do constant acceleration, but it's going to be negative acceleration, but the car is still going to be moving forward. So the car is moving this way, but it decided to slow down, okay? So we're gonna slow down. So we're going pretty fast. Let's say we're going 70 miles an hour and then we see something and we start to slow down. So now the dots are gonna get closer and closer together. We're going in a positive direction and we're getting slower. Let's see if we can figure what the distance graph should look like. If it's acceleration, it must be a curve of some kind. We are starting at the starting point, so it must start at zero. So we're starting here at the starting point, must start at zero. But instead of getting faster and faster and faster, we're getting slower and slower and slower. So in the first second, we went a long distance. In the second se second, we didn't go quite as far. and the third second, less far. And so what you get if you connect those dots is an outside curve. We're not starting at zero speed. We are already moving at 70 miles per hour, but we are slowing down. Now, if we actually stopped when we got to four seconds and got to a stop, then we would be at zero meters. So we're slowing down. So the velocity starts fast and then slows down, okay? So those lines are changing in a negative direction. So if you have an upward curve, the change is in a positive direction. So the velocity is gonna be straight. So distance, velocity, acceleration, or distance, velocity, acceleration, okay? So negative acceleration, which means this graph must be negative. And all we're doing is calculating the slope. And if you have the numbers, the rise over run stuff, you can do that. Just make sure that you put in your negatives in the correct, correct place. So let's take a look at the forces. Same basic setup, but now we have the brakes acting on the car. And so if we add all those up together, these two will cancel out and we will only have brakes causing the car to slow down. 